Before starting to play and to build a Bluetooth low energy application on the WBA55 Nucleo board, let's take the opportunity to have a look about the product capabilities, the main asset and the associated ecosystem. So in this section, we'll go through the main product capabilities. So first of all, the Bluetooth low energy features, the power and radio performances of the product, the extensive security feature set inherited from the powerful STM32U5 series, as well as some hardware consideration demonstrating the BOM flexibility and efficiency, and of course, going through the ecosystem which is there to leverage your software and hardware design. So first of all, let's have a look about the product ID card and the associated Bluetooth low energy features. First of all, we are dealing here with a series, the STM32WA5X series. The focus of the end zone and playing session will be based on the STM32WA55 series, chipset, sorry, which is SMPS based, so which is power efficiency oriented. In the meantime, there is existing the STM32WA52, which is LDO based, so which is a trade off between power efficiency versus BOM efficiency. Products are system on chip based on a single core M33 where you will run your application and the Bluetooth low energy stack. The BLE stack is compliant to Bluetooth low energy 5.4. So that means the product has been qualified Bluetooth low energy 5.4. On top of BLE, the product is capable to support other protocols such as Zigbee, Thread. Device is getting quite outstanding output power up to 10 dBm and some very good and aggressive figures in terms of power efficiency, 5.4 milliamp at 0 dBm typically. But we'll see later on in coming slides the result considering this in an overall use case. So device is targeting BLE. We are compliant 5.4, but we are supporting as well all the protocol. Device is indeed certified 5.3, but features are, but device is full feature 5.3. So this is always a trade-off and compromise. In BLE landscape, you will get some chipset which are compliant to the specification and so certified to the 5.4, while they are supporting only some feature of 5.3. Our STM32WBA support the full feature of 5.3. So that means on top of the legacy 1 megabit, we are supporting first the long range coded fee in order to increase the range. We are supporting the advertising extension feature with as well the periodic advertising. Device is capable to support the new coming audio use cases such as AuraCast. And so we are supporting at stack level and at silicium level the Ozochronus channel. Of course, our device is capable to act as a master and slave in the same time, being able to sustain up to 20 link in the same time. And of course, we are supporting some more, let's say, with an exotic feature from the BLE, so that's the GAT caching and the power control, which is quite a nice and efficient feature that allow to reduce dynamically the output power versus the quality link. And so at the end, it's a compromise to get a very good uh, power efficiency. And of course, our stack is always under, let's say, improvement. On top of maturity, we are adding features. New one coming will be periodic advertising with response that should, let's say, allow to catch the market of electronic chef label. For the one being in the past playing with our first BLE STM32, the STM32WB, just a bit of word about the BLE API. Of course, the STM32WB is a dual core. The STM32WBA is a single core with a new RFIP, so an improvement of the existing WB. Both devices are so based on a different leak layer. But at host stack level, at host BLE stack level, the stack is the same. Of course, the one on the WBA is getting more features. But at the end, the software API remains the same. So migrating from one to another one, it's pretty efficient and flexible. So if you want to start from the dual core and migrate to the single core, from BLE software application, it's pretty efficient because the software API are almost the same. As we are dealing with a wireless product, we have to consider two 
very strong feature which are the radio performances and the power performances. First, RF performances. Our device STM32WBA55 is capable to get an output power up to 10 dBm. The RF sensitivity, the RX sensitivity is at minus 97 dBm at 1 megabit per second. And so, at the end, this allows to get a quite outstanding dynamic range of 106 dB. So an overall budget link of 106 dB, which is quite strong, and that allows to get a very uh, strong and robust connectivity. Now, what I can achieve with 106 dB? This is a good question, and there is no, let's say, magic answer. It's really depending about the overall environment. So here, I will really encourage you to go to the SIG BLE Web Alliance website. Link is there. Open the Bluetooth range estimator tool that will give you some, let's say, approximative range pending to your application constraints outdoor, indoor. And this is pretty nice in order to feel the things and to understand, okay, with up to 10 dBm outdoor at 1 megabit, what is the range I can achieve? So RF performance is pretty aggressive with a budget link of 106 dB. This is maybe a chart you are familiar with, if you are familiar with our STM32 product. As you can see, our STM32 WBA5X series, and so the WBA55, is offering as well a wide range of power consumption scheme. And this is very efficient to really consume what application is really demanding, okay? So for sure, if you look at the chart and the figures, extract from datasheet, the STM32 WA55, which is SMPS based, will give some better performances. As we are dealing with Bluetooth low energy, there is one key figure which is important. What is the sleep or let's say standby current that I'm able to sustain while the RF operation is still ongoing? On WBA55, I would be able to sustain RF operation while my sleep current in between such RF operation would be 1.25 microamp. And so if we consider this standby current in an overall real application use case, such as a beacon, I will get some very quite good and aggressive figures. Let's consider a device which is advertising every two seconds, 11 bytes at 0 dBm. In between those two seconds period, I will so enter into the standby mode at 1.25 microamp. In such use case, my device will consume 5.5 microamp. And so I will be able to get a beacon application running from years over basic silicon battery. So just keep in mind that on top of wide range of power scheme, the standby current that allowed to sustain RF application is really key and efficient and at the end, you will get very nice uh, figures and being able to design peripheral application running on, on silicon battery for years. Okay, power and RF, which are some key features. The other key features of the STM32WBA series is the security features. Device has been built to design wireless application, but keeping in mind is to build a secure application. Our product is so based on a quite extensive functionality to protect your asset, to protect your software IP, to protect your hardware, and at the end to protect your overall design. Device integrates a trust zone, and we'll see later on, which is a must to have and a key asset to be able to isolate the secure part to the non-secure part. Some cryptographic accelerator in order to secure the link, to secure your data. Active tamper, okay, with six active pairs of tamper pins to protect your hardware design. And one of the most key element is the security assurance level. Our solution, our stm 32 wea 5 is CZIP level 3 certified. And this is now not just a nice to have, but will become almost a must to have looking at the ongoing and coming new uh, regional certification. So our device has been certified CZIP level 3. And this is one of the strong feature of the product on top of the BLE capability. So it has been certified CC level 3, so this is mainly something that you will have to 
potentially reuse in front of certification lab. But in regard of your application, what you can do with our security built-in, let's say, application. The Trust Zone. Our device, our STM32WBA, integrates the Trust Zone, which is there to isolate the trust to the untrust. Of course, the RF stack will remain on the untrust part, okay? And you cannot move it to the trust part. But you can easily move and put your code into the Trust Zone. How to do this? There is a dedicated wiki page where you will find a lot of input in order to be able to enable over STM32WBA over a BLE code example to trust on. So already in phases, our STM32 wiki page integrates a lot of input and part of it, there is this powerful trust zone enabling over a BLE code example. Let's consider now some other features of the product more hardware oriented. First, the flash access improvement. The STM32WBA integrates a flash manager in order to ensure synchronization between flash access requests and RF activity. Access to the flash is always a constraint, so let's say a compromise when you have to deal with RF activity, getting highest priority, and your own application needs. Thanks to the flash manager, your application just needs to ask and request an access to the flash, and the flash manager will give you access if there is no RF constraints ongoing. So this is efficient and transparent for your application. Just use it as it is, and it will definitely ease your software design. Just a word, in general, and this was the case of our past series STM32WB, time to erase a sector of eight kilobytes is around 22 milliseconds, and even more on some of the competitors. Thanks to the flash technology integrated over the STM32WB5, Time to raise is only 3.4 milliseconds. So at the end, you can still for sure use the flash manager, but we do not foresee any constraints in terms of flash application access and RF constraints. And on top of the flash efficiency, again, the flash manager will ease the overall flash access synchronization and will ensure no RF links issue when your application will ask to erase a sector typically. So please use this flash manager in your application, reuse our code example, it will definitely ease and secure your application. Still on our side, now let's have a look about the bomb cutter flexibility. Thanks to WBA5 series flexibility and integration, you can reduce your overall PCB bomb. In first, one of the critical paths and important parameter when dealing with RF devices is the filtering and matching. The WBA5X integrates a balloon, offering at the end a single-ended RF output, so you reduce the bomb. It also required a very limited number of matching and filtering components to ensure optimum performances. But this will be detailed later on in the journey and you will see that you can still even improve. The STM32WBA series also includes HAC internal programmable capacitance. So that's a low first during design phase to ease the overall HSC centering. So the HSC which is needed uh, to, to get and to make RF. So it will allow and ease the HSC centering and tuning. And of course, as we are dealing with software load cap, it will allow to reduce the bomb without the need to put some physical external load caps. But again, this is something that will be on phases and details in the hardware chapter. Okay, another quite good important feature in regard of bomb cutter is the number of limited decoupling caps required. The number of decoupling caps required is also very limited, making STM32WBA very efficient in terms of, uh, let's say, size and, and bomb. So, for example, with the STM32WBA55 in QFN package, it will just require 100 nanofarad for each supply pin, so typically sticks, and three. Uh, bigger values, so 4.7 microfarad on dedicated supply chain. So at the end, few decoupling caps, again reducing the overall bomb. Finally, the STM32WBA is providing a lot of flexibility, so thanks to a large package scalability, but as well to the flexibility pending to your real focus power versus bomb, you can use an external 32K or use the internal one, the LSE. 
As on phases at the beginning, you can use a variant with SMPS if you want to achieve power efficiency or the LDU base. And of course, device integrates a lot of peripheral. Ecosystem. And we'll conclude with this. As you know, the STM32 ecosystem is quite strong, powerful in order to design. And this ecosystem has been enriched in order to design an RF application. So, first of all, I assume you are all familiar with the powerful STM32 ecosystem, the CubeMX that allow in a few clicks to make the pinning and to enable and draft the initial skeleton code, the CubeID to build and compile your application, and the Cube Programmer. On top of those ecosystems, and we will play with this ecosystem later on in the journey, some dedicated tool has been enabled, the Cube Monitor RF, which is here for hardware guys in order to make in a few clicks some tests in order to check if the matching is a one is a good one, if the output power is a good one. Some nice and very good application at smartphone and now the capability to be able to do some air trace over the air. So first of all, the STM32 cube monitor RF, okay, which is a nice tool that you just plug to your board or to your PCB over your heart and that allows to directly send some command from your PC to your device. So that allows to emulate some Bluetooth low energy application from your laptop. So first, it's really educative because you can play with the API without building, compiling, testing. You just open the tool, test it, send the command and see and how the device react. So this is more than useful during design to understand the BLE features, but for hardware guys to start to make uh, some initial tests to understand if the PCB is behaving as expected in terms of sensitivity and in terms of um, power efficiency. Some smartphone apps which are more than useful and we'll play with. So first of all, the ST Toolbox, uh, which is a debug app. And okay, I will not comment here, we'll play with later on, but this is something that is more than useful and allow to display all device around data coming, allow to connect to ST device, to enable the bonding, to make some data rate tests, to enable the firmware grid over the air. And we have as well some custom app which are more considered as demo app okay with some nice logo displaying a cube moving and so on some temperature and so on so typically this one might be a good starting point for you uh, to start your own design because this one is available as android and ios in source code a new tool which has been uh, let's say in hands of past months and which is available uh, as well on the stm32 wiki page is the ble sniffer this sniffer is based on the formal and old STM32WBA55, which is a dual core solution that allow with specific firmware to make some air logs using Wireshark plugin. You just need to get an STM32WBA55 board. Follow the link, go to STM32MC wiki page, look at BLE sniffer. You will find all the right instructions step by step to guide you to install first the Wireshark plugin and then to start to play and to see air logs and being able to debug some BLE communication. Okay, what to keep in mind? So first, our STM32WBA55 is full feature BLE 5.3, is getting some very efficient uh, power consumption, especially when the BLE, the Bluetooth application is running. Some security add-on, which is no more a nice to have, but will become a must to have. So the trust on and the secure uh, the CCIP level three certification. And then of course, on top, the overall ecosystem that we'll play with in the coming session in order to build the basic application. But just before playing, uh, just remaining five to 10 minutes with my colleague Sebastian that will show you uh, the way you can evaluate, start to prototype, your own application based on STM32WFA5.